Hello, so while you watch my walk through the Cornish countryside, I have a few apologies to make. First of all, you're having to hear me record later a voiceover for this. When I was looking through the video and listening, um, you can really hear my footsteps and my jacket rustling. You can't hear my comments that I made while mapping quite so much. The next apology is sorry for the delay in uploading videos or the gap between videos at least. For this one I really wanted to make sure that I did the map editing at home after the surveying. Um, I'll explain why. So let's bring up the map as it was during this walk and I'm heading to the village of Brieg. Now the 2011 census suggests there's about 500 people that live in Brieg. There's um, a place of worship and a school um, and, and there's a few footpaths around it. Um, but that's all we know. Um, so I thought it would be interesting to walk here and to see there's still mapping to be done. There's house numbers and just checking that everything's correct by visiting it on the ground. So I thought it would be interesting to go to Brieg and see how long it takes me to map it. To, to walk around the whole area. So here's your chance now. Um, comment with your answer. How long do you think it will take me to walk around the village of Brieg mapping as I go? That's me taking a photograph of the footpath sign across the road. And then I was using keypad mapper again. But um, like many villages, pre had a lot of house names that I had to type in rather than using the handy keypad. I then got a bit confused why it wasn't letting me say that that house name was on the right. Um, and... OSM and was fine. I had GPS signal. Um, I just kept tapping and, and typing it in. What I actually realised at this point was that I hadn't actually told keypad mapper to start recording. As soon as I had done that I could click right, walk a bit further until I spot the next house name and then get ready to type it in. House names are a bit annoying because they make you slow down and spell the house name correctly. So I made it to the sign at the south of Brieg. I've mapped about six house names outside and and this track, I might have just walked about here, turned around and that's enough to mark the location of where the track starts. But in the distance, and you can't yet see it, um, there was some house and you could see me checking OSM and because it was a bit far away, I wanted to get the name, but 
actually I did find uh, it looked like I could loop through to the most western side of Prague um, if I continued on past this house. I should perhaps explain the long cable on my phone. When you saw the screenshot at the start of this video, you might have noticed my battery was really low after walking about six miles um, and photographing hedges and footpath signs. That cable is just connected to a battery um, pack that I had in my pocket to recharge. Annoyingly, this was the sort of barn house and there was no visible house sign and house numbering after coming all this way. But the style and gate here were good to map so that people know it's footpath. This, this puddle was not good, was not fun. So I'm not going to skip the map, the video just yet. You want to see if I fall in this puddle, don't you? So I quietly just said, do I jump or do I swim? And jump is what I did. To get to another puddle. Well, I made it without falling this time. I made it to the most western side of Brieg, there's a sign and just inside here I saw um, a park and a playground. It's always fun when you see these little facilities and you can add them to the map so other people can explore them and uh, um, go to a nearby park that they might not have found otherwise. On this walk there were essentially a lot of house numbers to be mapped so walking along sometimes up driveways to houses behind houses map some more parts of the park and playground um, map an orchard and then i found a post office which i didn't um, expect to be in Brieg but that's why I came here to survey it. A lot of the roads in Brieg were just tracks that went either side of houses and they showed the house number on both. I only needed to collect these once but I went down both of them just to double check. I also found Brieg has two rainbow cottages that are on different roads but the roads are only 45 metres apart um, and the houses 200 metres apart so Hopefully the correct data will help it, people find the correct rainbow cottage. So turning the corner and walking along this road, what do I see? But uh, it's a pub on the right hand side, right in front of the church. Now normally that's one of the first things that open street mappers would put on a map. But this is another sign that there wasn't much detail done in Brieg. And it's good for me to be updating the map.
Then I added these last two houses which were on the east edge of Prig. And this road wasn't on the open street map at all, so I didn't know how far I should go down. I actually went into SM and, and changed the settings so I could see aerial imagery. Um, and that let me know that this road doesn't continue as far as the next village, but um, it went down towards a, a farm um, so so I could walk it, it was worth walking um, to see if there was the name of the farm that I could take note of and update the map It's good to also map this relatively new roads of housing, um, which was in the southeast area of Brieg. And I took a photo of the road sign which had the Cornish name. That's helpful because we can add that to OpenStreetMap data as well as the main English name. As it was school ending time here and I was about to walk towards the school, I even saw some people walking home. I turned the camera off for a bit because it's not good to film children. Um, what I will show you is that OSM and was handy because as I walked past the school I could see where I had got to when I turned off to the west to that path I knew when I could turn around so I didn't duplicate my efforts. I was about done here there was just a, a bit along the A road but I was tired so I looked up the bus times and now um, you can watch me on the bus back to Porth Levin. Did you guess how long it took me to walk around Brieg? Well, it took about an hour and a half. I'm not going to do my usual before and after pictures because I also recorded me doing the editing back at the computer. So um, you'll be able to, to see that and see how long that takes. That video will be up shortly. But top deck of a bus, amazing views.